Hey, it's Kevin Geary. Welcome back to ACSS 101. In this video, we are going to cover box shadows. We're going to talk about the default box shadows, how to apply them, and then how to customize your box shadows and even change their names. Let's go ahead and take a look. So I have three boxes right here. I am going to start by applying our default box shadows. I'm going to do this with utility classes. So I'm going to right click on the input here. That's gonna bring up the ACSS context menu and I'll search for box. And you can see that I have my three box shadow options right here. I have M, L, and XL. I'm gonna apply M to this one. I'm gonna do the same thing to this middle box, except I'm gonna apply L. And then to this last box, I'm going to apply XL. We'll go ahead and take a look at this on the front end. So you can see there's a clear difference between the three box shadows. These are how the box shadows render out of the box. And now I'm gonna show you where you can go to adjust these box shadows. So I'm gonna open automatic CSS. We're gonna to go to additional styling, box shadows, and you're gonna see shadow one, shadow two, and shadow three. You're also gonna notice that the name is customizable. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But you can see right here, I am free to essentially customize this box shadow. And I'm gonna do, um, let's do a 10 pixel, 10 pixel offset, 60 pixels, and then black trans 60. Let's go ahead and hit save, and let's see what happens when this all refreshes. And you can see this is box shadow M, which is now a completely different box shadow. And this actually supports layered box shadows. So I have open right here a box shadow generator. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the aspect of the code. I don't think this copy will let me just I copy in isolation, but I'm gonna expand this right here and I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in. I don't need the property, I just need the values and I don't need the semicolon. And now I'm gonna hit save and we're gonna see when this refreshes that I essentially get that exact layered shadow from that generator, okay? So I can generate a shadow using a box shadow generator and simply paste the values in. I can even swap out the colors with my own color tokens if I want to for transparencies and keeping everything within the ACSS color system. Everything is fully customizable. Anything that is a valid box shadow property, you can put in right here, no problem, okay? So this is custom box shadows. This is using the defaults. Let's also take a look at how we can add box shadows to a custom class. We don't have to use utility classes because everything is tokenized on the box shadow side of things as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these utility classes and I'm just gonna name this box one. You can name it whatever you want to. And I'm just gonna show you a couple different ways where you can use the tokens to apply your box shadow to this custom class. So the first way, the obvious way, I'm gonna go to root and I am going to say box shadow. And then I'm gonna say box shadow M. You can also do box shadow one. Box shadow one will always work regardless of what the name is. Box shadow M requires the name to be M. Okay, and as you're seeing, it is applying box shadow M using that variable. However, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a look at changing the name. So I'm gonna go to box shadow, and for example, if we wanted some funky, crazy shadow, maybe with a, a primary color instead of this, right? We might name this main, or we might name it brand, or something like that. And so I can do, let's say five pixels, five pixels, 80 pixels, primary color. Let's go ahead and see what happens there. Notice I'm naming it brand. Okay. So it has a custom name now. Let's go ahead and hit save here with the builder and just refresh. And you're going to see that I don't see a box shadow on this item. Why? Because I'm referencing box shadow M and there is no box shadow M anymore. I took M away and I changed it to box shadow brand. Now, if I use one, you are going to see one works perfectly fine. That's a terrible looking box shadow, by the way. One works just fine. Remember I said the numbers, one, two, and three will work at all times, but look what also works here, box shadow brand. So I am able to create custom names. Those carry down to the names of the actual tokens and you can do whatever you want. Now I'm gonna show you one more way and it's kind of like a backdoor sneaky way. If you don't wanna write the custom CSS, you can go to border box shadow, open box shadow, go to the color field, go to raw and 
put in box shadow brand. It used to work. Box, sh oh, it's, I did, I copied the entire property. You don't want to do that, okay? Let's take all that away and let's say box shadow brand and you're getting box shadow brand. This is kind of a backdoor, like because of the way that Bricks works and parses and renders things, this works, okay? Would I recommend doing it this way? Probably not. You're burying it like a couple panels deep. It's better, I think, to just use the custom CSS field. But if for some reason you wanted to do it this way, you absolutely can. Just remember, use the entire token right here in the raw field of the color, and you have to leave all of the other fields blank, okay? So that does, in fact, work. So with this methodology in ACSS, you can create and define custom box shadows if you don't want to use our out-of-the-box box shadows. Uh, you have full control over the names of those shadows, which then in turn changes the name of the token and the numbers one, two, and three always work as a fallback, okay? This is box shadows in ACSS. It doesn't really get much easier. And uh, that's it. Drop a comment below and uh, make sure you like the video, of course. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you see all of the upcoming ACSS videos and not just this one. I'll be back very soon with another video. Peace.